In this age of social distancing, we've been told you can't be doing that when it comes to getting together and assembling. Churches themselves have been told you can't get together, you can't assemble, you just can't be doing that. Is that true? Today we're going to talk about the danger of isolation. Folks, I'm glad you could join us again. My name is Nathan Jones, Internet Evangelist, and I'm here with... Tim Moore, the Associate Evangelist at Lamb and Lion Ministries, and we'd like to talk to you today about the danger of isolation. How about it, Nathan? You like being alone or with a large group? Well, I gotta say one thing about this coronavirus crisis, if you're an introvert, and I, I'm 50-50 either way, you, you like this. This has been kind of a good thing. Now, if you're an extrovert and you need to be socializing, it's been a terror because you are being isolated and cut off from people. And psychologists are coming out now and saying that this continual isolation, first with the lockdown and then the social distancing, wearing masks to cover the face so you can't hear people. Dr. Fauci recently said we should wear goggles. I mean, pretty soon we will be not only isolated from the public, but we'll be isolated while we're in the public. And it's having dramatic psychological effects on people. Yeah, there was actually a, a county official in Tennessee that said they had had no outbreak of COVID there in their county, but they had eight incidences of suicide, mm -hmm. primarily because people were losing hope and the social isolation was driving them to psychological uh, turmoil. And I think that's a great danger. Scripture has several examples of people who isolated themselves or at least felt to be alone. What are some of those that you can think of? Well, I think first for, uh, just to piggyback on that as, as children, uh, we all have children that are high school, college yeah. age, and we're seeing a, a tremendous detriment to them. The oh, socializing yeah. that's important to build them up into a society is being taken away from them on top of the, the cell phones and social media that's already isolating them. But we've seen uh, people that isolate themselves in the Bible start getting a little weird in views. For instance, uh, Elijah had this great victory that God Amen. defeated the prophets of Baal. And yet when he was isolating the cave, he started doubting that God was powerful or even with him, even after he had that great victory. Yeah, he said, I'm all alone. I'm the only one left. He sort of had a major breakdown of a pity party. Pity party and yeah. the Lord had to say, no, you're not the only one. There's still 7,000 who have not bent their, knee to ne or their knees to, uh, to Baal. We have other examples. I think of Jonah. God gave him a call on his life, but Jonah ran away from the call. He ran away from his people and went down, down, down to the sea and ended up in the belly of a great fish, uh, as far away from encouragement and accountability as you can imagine, but the Lord raised him back up. What other examples come to mind? Well, look at King Saul. As he started isolating himself from his people and all, he started getting ultra paranoid, uh, even that he had was open up to demonic influence, mm. and eventually it almost drove him mad by the end of his career. It certainly did. Well, the other example I can think of dramatically from the New Testament would be Judas Iscariot. Judas was one of the 12. He was included with the group, and yet he went off on his own to arrange for a different kind of plan, hoping to force Jesus' hand, but he allowed himself to be indwelled by Satan, leading to a great tragedy. Now, we know that the Lord wove together the plan for Jesus to be crucified. He gave up his life, but Judas came to recognize that he'd made a terrible decision, and he was so distraught that he cast away his blood money and committed suicide. The, the dangers of isolation, folks, lead to psychological and spiritual trauma that the Lord warns us against throughout Scripture. And I have other examples from the modern era. Uh, I like to say when fighter aircraft go out to fly a combat mission, they make sure they always go in two, so they, they provide mutual support. In recent years, I've known two examples, one being Pastor Saeed Abedini, a pastor who was held in an Iranian prison mm -hmm. and kept in isolation, and he said it began to mess with his mind psychologically. And of course, another pastor held in Turkey by some of the uh, the Islamic uh, extremists that took over that government was Andrew Brunson. And he said for a number of months, he was kept in isolation, in solitude. They would not even allow him to know the kind of support he was being given from back home. And he said he contemplated suicide in those dark moments of the soul when he thought 
he was all alone. And we is, are not designed to be alone. No, not at all. And it's leading up to something too, because when you feel isolated, you get fearful. And when you get fearful, you're willing up to give up some of your freedoms for security. And that means a bigger government. And we know folks where this is going prophetically. It's when things get so bad and after the rapture, people are really scared, Amen. natural disasters, more than likely economic collapse around the world. They're gonna call for a leader who can promise to give the world that security and that hope that they haven't had. And we're at the beginning stages of that. We certainly are. I'll go even all the way back to the beginning of scripture. Okay when the Lord declared only one aspect of his creation was not good. You remember what he said was not good? It was not good for Adam to be alone. alone. Yeah. And so the woman was created to be a helpmate, a partner for Adam, a fitting companion. Folks, today, there are many who are trying to divide us. There are many who are saying, you can't be doing that. You can't even be gathering together as a church, as a body of believers, the body of Christ. We know that Satan himself prowls about by, like a lord a roaring lion, if I can say it correctly. But Nathan, who does he seek to devour first? Yes. The, those that are culled out uh -huh. from the flock. He doesn't go after the entire flock. He goes after the lone sheep. And so my appeal to you, our appeal to you today, is to apply the truth that is shared in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25, which says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Nathan, obviously, that could mean corporate worship, that could mean corporate Bible study. Well, there are some other ways people right now could ensure that they are still assembling together oh, yeah. and mutually encouraging, mutually supporting one another. Well, one of the words we've all learned recently is Zoom. We're Zoom. getting together our Bible studies in Zoom. It's home groups, uh, family. Again, the family is the nucleus. The family yes. should be keeping each other accountable. That's what the Lord wants. You know, Bible going to church is not just about worship or about eating donuts or whatever, but it, it's about the fellowship and accountability, the family of God, a foretaste of the millennial kingdom in heaven to come. Yes, it is. So folks, we hope that today has been an encouragement to you. And don't buy into the lie that you need to divide yourself and separate yourself and isolate yourself. Listen to the truth revealed in the Word of God. Ensure that you are assembling with other believers, either electronically or in person. And not just for your benefit, but for theirs. I've heard people say, well, I didn't get much out of church this week. And I've always asked, really, what did you give? What did you do to encourage and support another brother or sister in Christ. So in that regard, we Christians are in this together as part of the body of Christ. And we need to model the kind of unity, the kind of mutual support and encouragement that scripture calls us to. Godspeed.